Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting episode of Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've been really busy since the last episode. Uh, there have been lots of, lots of expansions. As you can see, wow, that's a lot, lot more stuff going on here. <laughs> so let's see, in the last episode we talked about this iron mine I'd built over here and that's that's chugging away quite happily. It's um, filling up all of these these chests here and um, there's not, and there's a decent amount of iron coming through so that, that's working well. The train's trundling backwards and forwards merrily. And, uh, and I also built up the um, the blue science here. So with that, in the last episode I mentioned that I yeah, can't count. So I hadn't built up enough of these um, uh, engine making machines. And so now I've added in I've added in some more, so I've, I've doubled it. There's now 20 of them instead of 10. Um, and that meant I had to put in another machine making pipes and another machine making cogs. But that's absolutely fine. Despite all of that, it does still look as if I'm not getting enough iron through here. So I'm going to need to take a look at that. Is that a supply problem or is it a consumption problem? The supply seems to be coming through fairly thick and fast. There's another belt feeding in some more here, um, and there's not all that much being used. It's, yeah, so it's basically there just isn't enough iron being fed along here for the for the factory. So it's all just just all getting used up by everything else that's going on. So I think what I'm probably going to need to do to fix that is put in a third one of these iron smelting facilities and have a belt run all the way along here, carrying it up to here, and then and then loading it in maybe up here somewhere just to to make sure I've got enough on the, on the bus. So that, that went quite well, um, in theory at least, as I said, I need to fix the iron supply. I then went on and built another um, another belt making facility up here, but this time I made it a bit more expandable and future proof. So as you can see I've got the yellow ones and the red ones, and I've got a, some machines in here to do the blue ones eventually when I, when I research them. And I've got machines here making all of the cogs and, and, and things for them. Uh, so this this system here should be able to run through and produce belts as, as fast as I use them up. I mean, whether that's actually going to be the case, we'll we'll wait and see. I've got uh, obviously it's, we've got it mostly uh, well, it's, it's limited there. It's mostly caught up, but it's limited by the iron supply. So this is very slowly making the yellow the yellow belts and the yellow underground belts it's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, I need I need more iron for that. So I'm going to need to once that's sorted out, we'll hopefully be all right again. I'm also building the Mark II of the um, of the assembly machines because there was something I needed those for specifically. I haven't gone through and upgraded all of the uh, assembly machines to Mark IIs yet, mostly because I haven't really felt the need to. The science ones would be the first I'd do for, uh, upgrade those because they're the ones that run all the time and produce uh, and in theory need to be running 100% of the time um, to produce the science packs. I've also got a couple of facilities here on the bus making sulfuric acid and uh, and batteries, and that's uh, made possible by the input of sulfur that's coming in here from the from the oil um, systems. Uh, I don't seem to have linked the this up here uh, for some reason. Probably just an oversight. Uh, let's put that there. Uh, but, and also, but it hasn't mattered because I haven't needed sulfuric acid further up the belt yet. Uh, that's just, it was mostly made for the for the batteries, but I was I had a feeling I'd probably need it later. And then that led on to me making bots, and it's about time to. So now I can that so that belt that piece of pipe I put down there will be automatically placed. Uh, and so here we've got uh, we've got the sort of fairly standard system here, making the normal normal motors that are being made into power powerful motors that are then being taken in and turned into electric motors. So you need the third tier for these, and that requires various interesting inputs like lubricants and. Um, Actually, that's about it. An electric motor as well, but lubricants is the new one. And from that, we can then make the uh, flying robot frames, which requires batteries and steel. And then we can make from that, we can then make the uh, the two types of robots. Uh, my limiting factor on this seems to be the flying robot frames, actually, because that's the one that's um, running constantly. He says as it stops. Now, maybe maybe the limiting factor is actually the electric motors. But anyway, we've got. 146 construction bots and 29 logistics bots. So. It's not remotely enough yet, but if I just leave that running, it'll gradually increase. And I think, I, and yeah, I, one of those machines might be enough. As you can see, I've started to use the blue machines here, the the Mark IIs, um, and I think that was because one of these things, I think it's this one, the electric motors. You can't you can't have fluid inputs into the Mark I machine, so that forced me to make the Mark IIs, and so then I've just been using them everywhere. To go with that, I've, I've, I'm also making the um, 
bot uh, roboports um they're just called roboports yes roboports and the um logistics provider chests now i haven't unlocked the um logistics requester chests yet which is a bit of a shame but that's gated behind a uh, yellow science which i've not got to yet because those are those are really useful for things like uh, loading trains up or loading loading a sort of a personal train up but i can now use logistics requesters and so all of these things should in theory be brought to me by brought to me by the logistics bots if there's enough of them in the uh, in the logistics network uh, which there doesn't seem to be of quite a lot of these things so it's it's just, it's a work in progress yeah that's, let's let's leave it say that what am I doing here? Ah, yes, I'm making concrete here because I needed concrete for the robo ports and for something else I was making. So I've got. It turns out you can make um, one one pole machine. One of these pole machines it will produce about enough for I think it was eight um, concrete machines, um, but but one sand machine will only produce enough for four. So that's working quite happily as it is. But if I needed if I needed to have an, um, if I needed more concrete than this, I'd have to then put in a second set of them. Uh, a second set of these machines. I wouldn't need another one making iron sticks because one machine is enough to support eight of those. But as it is, this is easily enough concrete for what I'm using at the moment. Then the um, the bus had to cross over the railway, so that's a lot of underground belts in here. It's really expanding quite quickly. And up here, right. So this is one of the defensive things. So the the um, the meteorites. I've mentioned those a few times when they've blown up big chunks of my base, and they they did that again. Uh, it looked like this in the aftermath. That was which um, absolutely sucked. I had to, had to then go in and rebuild everything in this area. Um, so I thought I'd look into the uh, defensive cat defense guns, which is what I've, I've got here. This is making the actual guns themselves, and putting them into a box as usual. This is making the ammunition for them, and then loading it into the gun. Uh, the problem is, oops, it only covers a relatively small area, as you can see. So in order to cover the whole whole base, I would need an absolutely enormous number of these. I did a little bit of poking around. So that's um, this one, which has a range of... 64 yeah 64 as it says on there um, and we'll shoot up to four meteors per volley and, and four meteors is enough to take out an entire um, an entire at a meteor attack for want of a better word um, although the fact it has a 50% accuracy is, is slightly concerning but then this one this meteor defense is a lot more expensive and need blue circuits which I'm I'm, I'm nowhere near at the moment um, but that can defend an entire planet from from meteors, so I'd need, but only one at a time, so I'd need sort of three or four of those, and again I'd need to make ammunition for them, which is, again, a bit more expensive, but nothing nothing impossible. So I think I'm probably going to just ignore these uh, meteor point defense, because it's covering the entire base with it, it's just going to be so much effort, and wait and go straight for the mete actual meteor defense. Okay, so that's my that's my main bus. As you can see, it's it's now extended quite a bit further. It was down here at the end of the last episode. Now it's come all the way up to here. My big concern about this is that there's another there's there's biter bases up here, and there aren't really any defences across this way. Um, and I'm a bit in two minds about this because on the one hand, I don't want the biters to come in and wreck my stuff, so I do want to have defences in all the way around it. But on the other hand, the, the bus tends to grow quite rapidly at this point, so I'd be forever taking a wall down building and then building it higher up and that's a bit annoying so I think I'm going I am going to have to just suck it up and make um, maybe maybe take this base here out and then build a string of turret turrets and walls round like this to cover this to cover this sort of area Where's that going? okay now it's missing all anything missing everything I care about so if I build it round hit this sort of area that'll give me quite a lot of space to expand out into um, without having to do an enormous amount of combat Okay, so I mentioned lube for the um, electric motors, and so I needed to need somewhere that was making lube, and that's made from oil, so um, specifically heavy oil. So there's a couple of extra steps for this. Up here, I've got this big long rank of um, oil refineries, and they're all producing um, just producing petroleum, uh, petroleum gas, because that's what you need most of, because that gets turned into fuel, and into sulfur, and into plastic, and you get well. I, I tend to find plastic is always in high demand. Um, so this this is using the new recipe that was added in, I think it was 1.0, or at least fairly recently, because I, ne I've, I haven't seen it before, so it obviously came in during my Angel Bob's run. Uh, so this takes in oil and water and produces just produces the petroleum gas. I then researched up to get advanced cracking, and and I think there's a third one, which is part of this mod pack. We have, um, let's have a look, here we go. 
so we've got we've got the petroleum gas recipe that takes in 100 crude oil and produces 90 gas we've got advanced oil processing which takes in 100 crude oil and produces 20 50 and 50 and then we have this crude oil processing that produces 60 40 20 all each one is from 100 100 on the inputs so i did the maths for this and have oh no i do have the piece of paper i did it on um they're all they all come out at basically the same efficiency so the um, the basic one takes in takes in 100 oil produces 90 gas fine 90 call it 90 percent efficient i suppose one produces 90 at least for every 100 advanced produces uh, produces the 20 50 50 as we saw you can then crack the heavy to to light oil which and um which gets you 65 light and 50 gas and then you can crack the light to gas as well which gets you to 93 so it's pretty close to be i mean it's, yes okay it's three percent more efficient but it's it's pretty close and uh, or alternatively the crude processing which is the one i ended up using uh to produce a 60 40 20 after the first stage of cracking it's 105 20 and after the second stage of cracking that goes to ni again 90 petroleum so it's it it just doesn't seem to be worth using the more advanced ones and bothering with those extra stages of cracking so what i've done is i've got a few of these up here producing the um producing heavy and light oil and then i'm, I'm i've got the i've got pumps in here with that are set to monitor the tanks and if the tanks get over 20,000 then they'll start then they'll start cracking just to make sure it it doesn't get backed up uh, but i'm not putting too much effort into into actually making the um using these for the massive quantities of petroleum any any petroleum they produce is a happy byproduct rather than the, the deliberate intent of what they're doing so from up here i can then turn the um the heavy oil into the lube using these chemical plants and again we've got those nice pretty graphics i was talking about in the last episode where you get the input comes color comes off as a plume of smoke off the top here and the output color swirls around inside it with this um green goo that's in, inside and I, I think that really looks looks really quite nice it, it makes the um the chemical plant to look a little bit more different as well which is nice it gives you a bit more a little bit more variety because otherwise you just get huge huge ranks of the machines and they all look exactly the same and so that then comes down a pipe down to down to a couple of some tanks and into the station here where it'll, as it gets gradually produced it'll fill up this train and then the train can bring it down to my where is it? oh here we go the lube drop here um, where I dump it into these tanks and as you can see I'm not getting through the loop particularly quickly these tanks are all full so when the train when this train does fill up it can come down here and it'll just it'll just sit there until it's empty that's absolutely fine I'm, I'm, I'm happy for it to do that we've got unbalanced unloading here which is a bit of a pain it's not too bad because there's only about seven eight hundred on there uh, but there's three point two thousand on that one I don't know why these aren't unloading in a slightly more balanced way because they're both I was un I was hoping these having this thing here would mean it would draw from both sides, but it clearly isn't. I may need to have a bit more of a think about this, or perhaps just not care. I don't know. I it, I, I, I have a worry this will lead to problems later on. Put it that way. The ammo train has been busy. I shall show you why in a moment. Um, but yeah, so these are my these are my inputs to my bus, and everything else is being made more or less in situ. I have also, I think this iron ore state train here was um, was in was showed up in the last episode. That's obviously dumping onto the belts here, and I'm using one, two, three, four of the inputs now. I've expanded a bit here. Uh, this iron mine up here is really, really running out. I, I could mine this bit here, but I, I, I don't care. I'm just going to leave these until these two run out, which is going to be in another 4,000 iron. That's not very long. That can trickle through here. Um, and then yes, it's being topped up by a by the by this belt from the from the unloading station. I've got another one making more iron here, so I'll have to have a think about exactly how how I want to deal with this and whether I want to um, whether I want to have an additional iron furnace system producing more iron to ship it out uh, or or not. And then I've, I've also put in a second array of steel produ production down here. Um, yeah, this this so we've got one here making steel. We've got a second one here making steel. <clears throat> and the third one, okay, so we're up to three three things making steel now, um, which means I'm capable of producing 60% of one full yellow belt, because each one of these can produce, uh, will take in a full yellow belt's worth, and output half, and output a fifth of a yellow belt, because steel is expensive. 
And the reason they can take in a full yellow belt is one, of, one another one of my upgrades. If you look in here, you can just about see that I'm now using red belts for the in, for the input here. And red belts run twice as fast as um, as yellow belts. So that means I can get a full yellow belt on the input, turning into uh, onto one side of the red belt that runs through here. And in order to allow me to smelt that quickly enough, I've upgraded all of the mine, all of the all of the furnaces to steel furnaces which are effectively identical to the stone ones except they run twice as fast so that's those those two upgrades synergize really well together because you can just you can double your entire you can double the production of your entire system just by doing those upgrades without having to replace any of the other moving parts um, now nowhere seems to be actually running at flat out with with that which is uh, oh, actually no this copper is no even that isn't quite running flat out so my inputs my, my belts here are completely backed up however as we've seen I've not got remotely enough iron up here so my my production is okay um, it's my logistics getting the iron from the where it's produced to where it's used that is suffering at the moment and that's why I need to have another belt running all the way around here so that's something to do okay the other thing I've done is I've extended I've got this big railway this back railway backbone that I was talking about before oh no I've added in a second oil um, mine mine I don't know what you, I don't know what you, what you call something like that. another oil producing facility uh, because I didn't have it I wasn't didn't have enough oil coming in in here and so the um, the uh, power kept kept dropping because there was there wasn't enough and, and, and there wasn't enough oil in order to produce enough fuel to keep the power to keep the power running and the lights on. So I fixed that. This mine isn't fast enough, but when I add in this train that's bringing in massive quantities of oil from the other um, other site, that is enough to keep it going. So that's that is is now fixed. So that's that's why there's that down here. And I felt that that was close enough to this iron mine that I'd combine the two of them as a single outpost. And so I've, yeah, I've got the um, the cable the um, power running down here and across there, but they're close enough that I think that's okay. I didn't. I put the walls down before I planned how big the station needed to be, which is why the train turnaround thing is just outside the walls. But uh, never mind. And also at the other end of this backbone, which now runs all the way across here, we've got a copper station, a copper mine. The uh, copper mine inside the base was, I think that ran out completely. Basically, it was yeah, it was in here. It, oh, it's not run out completely. There's a, a few just picking up little bits of, of what's lying around still, but it's. Again, like the iron mine up uh, just up to the northeast, there's not enough coming out for that to remotely satisfy the factory. It, 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 it's barely worth having. Uh, if, if, if this ever gets in the way, or if wherever it is, this this one ever gets in the way, I'm, I'll, I'll rip them up without a second thought. They're they're um, they're not needed. They're just there because there's no point. I don't feel there's any point in pulling them up while they still technically work. So this is exactly the same as the iron mine, except it's producing copper. Uh, it's the same sort of big array of mining uh, mining drills. Uh, what what do you call it? Balance, belt balancer here to make sure I um, pull reasonably evenly from everywhere and output reasonably evenly to all the stations. And the stations have all filled up because at this stage of the game you don't need all uh, quite as much copper. I've also got exactly the same um, system here with the uh, with the am ammo train dropping off coal and ammunition, which then runs an ammo belt all the way around the edge, loading up all of the turrets exactly as as, as usual. Um, I have I've had to put in quite a lot of turrets here. There's been a few um, a few attacks, which is why this is a bit a bit more defended than normal, should we say? Um, and I currently I'm using the uh, burner generators, uh, burner turbine generators, because there wasn't any water particularly close. I suppose there's a puddle over here. I could always claim that and the oil supply as well, um, but I haven't bothered. Uh, so I've just gone with burner uh, burner generators. I have used the fuel processor here to add to to bump the um, the efficiency bit up a little bit though, because otherwise the the um, ammo train would be forever bringing coal out here just endlessly. As it is, um, I've got again got the um, two comparators in here, which feed out a signal to the uh, to the station to tell it whether I need anything more bringing out here or not. At the moment, it's showing up in red, so I, to show that I don't. I can't remember if I talked about these before actually, so I'll uh, I'll talk about them again. <laughs> uh, although not that one because it's hidden behind a tree. Let's have a look at the one in the iron iron mine. There we go. That's better. So what I've got here is red wire linking all of these chests together. Uh, going via a pylon so I can look at it and, and, and check the outputs and then going to these two um, uh, decider combinators and those 
we'll look at the uh, look at the inputs. One of them says, is there at least 2,000 ammunition? The other one says, is there at least 1,000 coal? Um, if, and if either of those are less, then they output, um, I think it was a green a green square, just as an arbitrary signal to, signal to choose, uh, to, the, to the station. And if the station receives any green squares, it'll turn the station on. And that means that this train over here, the ammo train, will go, oh look, there's a station to go to, and we'll trundle off over there. Uh, and, and, and of course unload to top everything up as, uh, when it gets there. I've put storage limits on the uh, on the ammunition chests because I only, I don't want them to get completely filled up because that's a massive waste of um, of resources just to, uh, of copper and steel oh, and iron as well just to fill them up with ammunition as long as there's at least um, one or t about a thousand or two thousand whatever it was I think it's I can't remember what I said it to as long as there's a decent amount of, of, of ammunition in there enough to keep the guns going for a while I don't care about the exact numbers oh, there goes the iron train out of the radar zone, back into the radar, <laughs> taking it all back to the back to the main station. So yeah, I am getting through. I am getting through a lot of iron at the moment, but yeah, that's to be expected. Okay, so I think that brings you up to date. It's been a, a slightly longer episode than normal. I got a little bit carried away with the um, with what I was doing and just kept playing and, and getting more and more stuff done. <laughs> I should try and have a bit more self control. I did get a comment on my last video saying that I should should bump up the um, my radar coverage uh, so, so, so that um, everyone can see what's going on a bit better. I I sort of agree. I do like to have reasonably complete radar coverage across my base. However, with the um, with the way I'm, I'm I'm playing it at the moment, I'm trying to have the uh, the the um, the outposts being much more self-contained, which is why I haven't run um, pylons all the way down the down the railway lines between the between the um, uh, between the outposts and so that means that there isn't any power between them so I can't put a radar in there there's there's nothing to, nothing to power it maybe later on I'll start ma I'll, I'll make a little blueprint that is half a dozen um, solar panels a couple of accumulators and a radar and go around dropping those in around the place uh, and that'll just keep uh, and that'll give me a little bit more coverage um, well we'll see but I, th I think as it is I've got a reasonable level of coverage. Yeah, there's a little. You can tell what's. You can always see what's going on inside the um, the actual outposts themselves. And I've got full coverage of my of my actual base, pretty much, or at least the, the bits of it that are actually doing anything. So I think it's probably okay at the moment, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll leave it, it as is. But I will continue to make sure there is a decent amount of radar in the um, in the outposts. I should probably stick another one in about here, to be honest, to cover this e this edge, because I'm not going to see if there's an at attack and damage happening there. And probably the same here, in front of these trains, there should be another one, especially if there's already power down here, just to cover this sort of edge area of the um, of the outpost. Right, so upcoming uh, things to do. Well. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, which probably means the next thing to do is to start thinking about the next science pack. I think that's yellow science. What does that need? Yellow science takes ah blue circuits. So that's yeah, that's going to be a bit of a um, a bit of a mission, and low density structures as well. I suspect I'll, if I get yeah if I get working on those two, um, then that'll allow, that'll sort of lead into the um, in, into those, and that maybe that'll allow me to get some better better power armor as well. Um, other than that, I don't know. Um, things are ticking over fairly nicely. I'd quite like to do nuclear power, actually. Have I got? Have I researched um, re enrichment yet? No, that requires purple science. Okay, okay, we're not going to be getting nuclear power until I've researched uh, uh, that one because, yeah, otherwise you can you, you just never get enough uh, two, three, five in order to power things until you've got the the enrichment. So nuclear power is going to go on the back burner. I might, th I could think about solar. I suppose I could build a big solar farm and accumulator farm now that I've got batteries. Um, reduce my reliance on coal a bit. That said, I've got quite a lot here, and it's this one belt is running basically flat out. Okay, that probably means I need to put in another coal belt as well. Uh, what do we? Sh what's what's short of coal? I suppose nothing's actually running out. It's just not keeping the belts full. I think I need to bring some, bring another belt of coal down here, and that should that should be pretty easy. I've got the splitters in here. I'll just run another one off one of these. That's yeah, basically pretty trivial. Okay, so that, so things to do: coal, boost coal production uh, supply, 
boost um, iron by putting in another belt around here, and then start to think about more advanced circuits, the uh, the blue uh, the blue circuits specifically, and the yellow science. I've got more red circuit production going on here now, so that's kind of okay. That's very limited by green circuits, actually. Why, 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 why? Nothing to do with input. We're just using them faster than we're making them. Okay, I need to boost production of green circuits as well. <laughs> it looks like another um, another episode of adding to things and making just making more of stuff. That's um, that's not a problem. I think the Factorio is often about that, so I can uh, yeah I can get on with that. So I'll uh, I'll show you what I've got up to in in those areas in the next episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.